HubSpot CRM Tutorial for Beginners, the ultimate guide to master HubSpot CRM. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with HubSpot CRM and I will be everything down to a beginner level so you can easily understand and follow along. So let's get started. Firstly, you're going to head on over to HubSpot.com and under HubSpot.com, you're going to see the product section. In your product section, you will see HubSpot has multiple different hubs. HubSpot has a marketing hub, it has a sales hub, a service hub, small business operations hub, and you can also see that they also have solutions so you can search for a particular use case. Now, CRM is customer relationship management. This is usually related to your business management. And you will see that for your CRM, you can opt for either just, you know, using the CRM or you can go with one of the other solutions provided by HubSpot. This is up to your personal preference. We are going to be focusing on the CRM suite. We're going to be focusing on actually managing our HubSpot uh, CRM. And we're not going to be looking too much into detail about the other features provided. So you can directly just search for HubSpot CRM if you don't want to manually look for it. But HubSpot CRM is a product that is meant to summarize everything. To some extent, a CRM has all the features that you find in a marketing suite and a sales suite. And it's just a simplified version of everything. So you're going to go into HubSpot.com slash product slash CRM. Then you're going to click on get free CRM. And from here, you're going to sign up on HubSpot. Now for signing up your email address, Google, Microsoft, or Apple, you can't sign up with Facebook. So I'm just going to be adding my email address over here and I'll click on verify email. Once you do that, you will get a mail and you're just going to click on login. I already have an account, so I'm just going to log into here like so. And I'm just going to sign in with Google to make this process a bit easier for us. You can totally choose to sign in with a your Apple ID or with any other tool of your personal preference. Now, once we have logged on or signed into our account, we are going to set it up. So firstly, we have to answer a couple of onboarding questions. It really doesn't matter how you answer them. You just have to move towards this question where you have to enter your company name. So my company name is Lily's and let's say I have two to five people working. After that, you can enter your company website. Now for any CRM tool, you want to link your website because that just makes it easier for you to manage your business. So I'm going to open up my Shopify store and I'm just going to copy the URL of my store and I'll paste that in over here. Once I do that, I can click on next and I am going to choose the United States as my data hosting location. Once we have done that, it's time to set up our CRM. You guys can see you have to pick out what you want for your CRM. I want sales, marketing, customer service. You have really specific templates within these sections. So you have sales if you want to specifically track your sales pipeline, if you want to do um, management of subscriptions, track business event attendees, if you want to use it for customer support tickets or managing existing customers. So I want to manage our prospects firstly, and I'll just click on apply template and this will apply this template. I can skip this section and you can later on set these up accordingly to your own personal preferences. So as you guys can now see, the template has been applied to our HubSpot CRM. Now, once we have done this, we can get started and there is a quick onboarding, but we can just close this and we can move towards setting up our CRM by ourselves. Now on the top left, you will see the HubSpot icon. And in this, you have a guide for marketing, sales, and customer service. On your top left, you have a marketplace. Then you have your general settings. Then you have your account information. Then on the left, you have your prospecting workspace. So you can go on ahead and add any of your potential deals. If you want to start seeing some real activity, you can link that over here. Then you have your CRM. In your CRM specifically, you have the option to add contacts, companies, deals, tickets, lists, inboxes, calls, and tasks. Then after that, you also have a marketing suite. Now in the marketing suite, you have email ads and forms that are available for free. If you want to build campaigns and add social, you do have to upgrade to a premium version of 
HubSpot. Below that, you have content where you can build website pages, landing pages, and a blog. And you also have a design manager. You also have some commerce integrations available for free, such as a basic commerce manager, payment generator, invoice generator, as well as your code generator, payment links, products, and subscriptions you can add. Then you have automations, reporting, and your data management. Now, to get started with our CRM, the first step is to add our contacts and our companies that we are working with. To do that, we can go into CRM on the left, and we're going to click on contacts over here. Once you click on contact, some sample contacts are added. You can select these like so and do delete, and this allows you to bulk delete and bulk add things. Now, if you already have a list of all of your contacts, you can click on import on the top right. And we're just going to proceed over here. And you can click on start and import, and you can import a file from your computer, such as a CSV or an XLS, or you can import an opt out list. And you can repeat a past import as well. For me, I want to manually add my contact. So I'm going to go back and go into my contact section. And you will see on the top of your contact, you have multiple different filters. So I'm just going to close all of these views over here. And I have this all contacts tab. I'm going to click on create contact on the top right. And once I do that, I'm going to proceed. And you have this pop up on the right where you can add your contact info. So I'll add one of my own email addresses like so as a contact like this. And I'll add the first name, last name. I'll just have to add a different name for this. And then after that, you can add their job title, phone number, the life cycle stage that they are in. Now for any lead or any contact that you have, you can add them in a particular life cycle stage. This is going to be different based upon different pipelines. Your marketing pipeline is going to have a different uh, life cycle stage in comparison to maybe your sales pipelines. So you guys can see all of those will be present here. Let's say this person is a subscriber. Now you have things such as lead, marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead. If this is an opportunity, if this is a customer, if this is, you know, unclassified, let's say this is a customer and then you can add a lead status. Let's say that this is already a customer, so I don't need to add one. I can just click on create and it's not mandatory to fill out all of these fields. You can just proceed with the information that you have. Now, if you're adding a uh, particular company, you can associate a contact with that. So just go into CRM on the left and then click on create company. And I'm just going to close that and then we can create a company. Let's say it's called alga.com. And you guys can see by default, it's going to fill out all of the information about that particular uh, company if you just type in the domain name. If you don't have the domain name, you can just skip ahead and add the company name, the company owner, the industry they are in. So let's say they are in apparel and fashion, then you can add the type. So this is really important whenever you're adding a company, if this is a prospect that you're willing to work with. If this is a partner that you're already working with, if this is a reseller, a vendor or other. So let's say this is a partner and we can add the rest of their information and then you can just click on create to add the company. And whenever you create any contact or company, you will see a full in-depth page. So if you just go into your company and open up the company name, you will have the option to view all about the company on the left. And on the center, you can view any of the overviews and activity. And then on the right, you can add associated contacts, associated deals, tickets, payment links, other companies, subscriptions, payments, attachments, invoices, and playbooks. This is going to be super helpful, especially when you're working individually with other businesses. You want to extract all data all together this is going to be what is going to work because you're going to be able to give a overview or a bird's eye view of everything that is ongoing with a certain business partner. Now moving on to the next section, we have deals. Now deals allow us to manage all of our revenue and you guys can see by default, HubSpot has a deal section where it has multiple different stages. Now if you want to customize any of these stages that are present within the pipelines or within your deal stages, you guys can do that by clicking on settings on the top right. Then once you go into settings, you can go into deals over here. Then you have the setup of deals. So you have annual contract value if you want to add total contract values. 
and you have your pipelines under deals. So click on pipelines over here and you will see the way that they have structured their pipeline. So this is my prospect pipeline. You can create multiple different pipelines. Initial outreach, needs assessment, solution proposal, solution presentation, objection handling, finalizing terms, closed one or closed loss. You can add further stages or you can customize these stages. And you can also edit the properties. So whether or not, you know, there is something that is dependent for this to exist. Now we're going to go back into our pipeline and this is our deals pipeline. So if you want to create a new deal over here, just click on create deal on the top right. Once you do that, you're going to put in the name. Let's say this is going to be my sales or let's say this is going to be marketing solution. And this is a perspective pipeline and this is in a need assessment stage let's say this is the amount and this is when i want to potentially close the deal then you can add the deal owner the deal owner is going to be the person on your end of the business that is dealing with that particular uh, acquisition or with that particular business deal and you can add the type. So if this is existing business or new business, existing business means you're already working with this, uh, with this particular company. New business means that this is entirely new. This is really important to define because that means if it's new business, it's really important to win new business because new business is what leads you to more deals. And you have the priority and you can associate this with a particular business uh, or a contact as well. So you can add a company or add a contact and you can also add some line items that are related. Line items it refers to the products that might be exchanged during this deal. Click on create over here to create your new deal. Now whenever a deal is created, you can move it towards uh, the next section. If you know it's moving towards the next section, you can move it like this and you will have a easier visual cue of where all of your deals are, what stage is everything in, what needs to be focused on more, and what can be skipped through. Now, after that, you have your ticketing system. Now, ticketing is especially important with retailers because ticketing allows you to manage any issues that your customers or your business partners might have. Not necessarily for business partners, more so for customers. Now, you can see this is the form for ticketing. If you want to customize this form, you can click on edit this form on the top right. This will open up the settings panel and it will allow you to build your own fields for ticket categorization. Now, let's say this is broke or defective products, and then you're going to add your ticket status. Let's say that they are waiting on us and then the description of the ticket, whatever it might be. So received broken product, broken products. Now, you are going to type, usually not you, but your customer support agent or your support team is going to type these as they are receiving these. So that just makes it really easy and seamless, but you're going to add the source. So let's say we got this in an email. Let's say this is the ticket owner. This is the person that's going to manage it. Let's say this is medium priority and you can add a create date, which is going to be today. Then you can associate this ticket. Now, if you have your customer base synced in, if you have your customer base you know, synced in with your contacts. You can select your customer from here. If you don't, you can skip it, but I highly do recommend that you sync your customer base. Just upload these CSV files of your customers over here. This just makes it really easy to ensure that every customer is reached out to and is contacted with their issues. Then you can just click on create and this will create the ticket. Now with every ticket, you can associate companies, contacts, and more. Now, within every ticket, you will see there's only a closed list because tickets just need to be resolved. They're not won or lost. They just need to be resolved. Now, moving on to the next section, we have lists. Now, lists are a bit different from segmentation because lists allow you to just basically build a certain category and you can segment the industry. You can segment people based upon their gender or the size or the value that they are providing to your business. So you can click on create list and uh, lists on HubSpot are pretty much similar to segmentation, although those are functionally different, but lists serve as a similar thing to segments. So let's say these are going to be our high value customers and you can add a description. You can choose two types. Now, this is where it actually differs, where it's either going to be a list or a segment. 
A segment is an active list where people are automatically updated based upon the certain behavior that is used to specify it. So let's say I specify high value list as a place where people are spending over $10,000 in my business. So that is going to be updated regularly. Then I can create a static list of high value customers that I have seen over you know, the previous data and I can just make a static list of those. You can click on next over here and then just choose who you want to add in your list and then click on save list over here. Now, once you have completed that, we can, you know, go briefly over inbox and calls. Inbox allows you to exchange messages. You can manage your Facebook messenger, WhatsApp, chat over here as well. This is just going to make it easier. Then you also have a call section and then a tasks section. Now, in your tasks, you can set up tasks for your team as well as yourself, and you can manage your queues. You can create a queue of tasks that need to be completed within a certain date. This makes it easier for management of individual work days, and it just helps keep everything on track. Now, below that, you have your marketing and your content and commerce features. Now, marketing is one of the most essential parts of CRMs nowadays because without email marketing, you're really not going to be able to reach your correct audience. So email marketing is a really, really big part of marketing right now. And you can go on ahead and go into HubSpot's email marketing tool, click on create email and get started with creating three types of emails, either regular, automated, or blogs. Automated emails are reserved for premium users of HubSpot, but you can create some amazing newsletters with HubSpot as well. Now, the best part about using HubSpot is that it's integratable with MailChimp. So if you're using MailChimp, that is definitely going to be a pro. And we're just going to select any welcome template. You can select whichever template you want. And if you like a template, just open that up. And once you have opened up the template of your choice, you guys can see on the left, you have a drag and drop section where you can add different types of blocks, including text, images, buttons, and more. And then on the right, you have a preview. To edit any element, simply select the element and you will see whenever you select the element on the left section, it's going to give the information about the content section. So this is the logo section. I can click on replace over here and upload my own logo. If I don't want to have this section, I can just click on the delete icon and remove it completely. And this way you can take any section and alter it. If you want to alter text, you can just select it like this and you can remove it and add your own like so. Once you've done that, you can review and send on the top right, but keep in mind there are some regulatory uh, requirements you have to fulfill, including adding your business address, ensuring that the people that are receiving the emails have actually subscribed to them, and making sure that there is a reply email included within your email and a unsubscribe option as well. Now, even within your marketing tool with emails, you have different sections where you can schedule emails, view all of the sent emails, archived emails, and build emails with AI. Now, below that, we also have some automations we can build. And with automations, it's all limited other than chat flows to the premium version of HubSpot. We've seen a lot about the premium version of HubSpot, but where does it start and is it worth it? Well, HubSpot CRM starts at $15 a month, and there are different plans available. So with the recommended starter customer platform plan, you have 50 active lists, 1,000 static lists, and additional limits. You have five times the marketing contact tier. You also have two available ad types and two audiences you can add. You have access to over 5,000 email templates. You can take control of your content. You can resolve tickets really quickly without any type of HubSpot branding. You have multiple different compatible apps you can integrate as well as receive email and in-app chat support. And for that purpose, I do think that if you're looking for an all-in-one manager for your business, HubSpot CRM can do a pretty good job. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or queries, leave those in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say.